Hi guys, it's Jessica D1987 and today I wanted to do a really popular recipe that my family has loved ever since I started making it about a month and a half ago and it's going to be for homemade dinner rolls and I'm happy to do this video for you guys because my kids, my older kids are taking a nap including the youngest one. She is strapped to me right here if you guys can see her and uh, I'm going to attempt to make this recipe while they are sleeping and so there won't be any noise or distractions. Like I said, this is a recipe for homemade dinner rolls. This can be um, used to make sandwich bread. You know, if you have a loaf pan, it can be used to make French bread. It can be used to make hamburger buns. It's a very versatile, simple, easy recipe. And I promise you guys, once you try this recipe, you're not gonna need any other. Your, your family's gonna be spoiled. You're not gonna want any store-bought version of this at all my family is spoiled and they won't take store ball at all so here in my mixer i already have put in two and one fourth of a teaspoon of active dry yeast you don't want to use the rapid rise and that's in a blue package if you're using the packets um, i actually have a big container of yeast so i use um, two and a fourth of a teaspoon if you have the trio packets that you can buy at the grocery store you just need one of those packets um, you just put that into a dry um, bowl or stand mixer and the reason why I'm using my stand mixer is because uh, it's easier and eliminates me having to knead the dough by hand my dough hook does it all for me so once again I have two and one fourth of a teaspoon of active dry yeast not the rapid rise and to that I'm going to add in one cup of warm water and one fourth of a cup of warm milk so that's what's in this container right here and the reason the way you'll know that it's uh, warm is by sticking a thermometer into it it needs to read between 105 and 115 degrees any hotter and it will kill the yeast any cooler and the yeast will not eat the um, water and the milk and rise so your bread won't rise you'll have flat dough um, so I'm going to take that and I'm going to pour it in slowly so I don't splatter the yeast everywhere okay and this is an optional step if you want you can sit uh, let the yeast the water and the milk sit in this bowl for about five to ten minutes until the yeast starts to bubble and foam up and you can stir up any remaining yeast or if you don't want to wait the extra five minutes you can go ahead and put in a fourth of a cup of white sugar um, alternatively you can use honey uh, molasses agave nectar something along those lines but we happen to have sugar in our pantry so that's what we're going to use and i'm just going to sprinkle that right on top of the milk water and yeast mixture and while I'm putting this in um, I'll tell you guys you let this mixture right here don't touch it for about 10 minutes and when you come back you'll see that it's starting to uh, foam up and bubble up and that's exactly what you want and after those 10 minutes you can go ahead and take your spoon a wooden spoon or a spatula and kind of stir up any remaining um, sugar granules or dry yeast that's left over and then from there we'll move on to the next step so I'll be back when it's time to do that okay guys it's been about 10 minutes and uh, my mixture has started to foam up and I stirred it up to make sure that all the yeast was dissolved into the liquid as well as the granulated sugar so now I'm going to add in my remainder uh, remaining ingredients and it sounds weird but this is what you're going to need you're going to need one egg that has been slightly beaten you're going to go ahead and add that and then you are going to need two tablespoons of unsalted butter that has been softened or been left at room temperature for at least 30 minutes it needs to be nice and soft just add that in there then you're going to need to add two tablespoons of oil in my pantry we had canola oil so that's what i'm going to use if you have olive oil vegetable oil corn oil any of those would work just fine or if you don't have any oil just use four tablespoons of butter or if you don't have uh, butter use four tablespoons of oil i like the combination because it produces um, a richer tasting product but like i said you can substitute wherever you feel necessary okay so after i've added that i'm going to add in 
a total of three and a half cups of flour. You can use all all purpose flour, you can use whole wheat flour or a combination thereof. But if you are going to use all whole wheat flour, do not, I recommend do not using the regular whole wheat flour because it's a little bit too dense for these rolls. Use a white whole wheat flour. And what we have and what my family has um, loved in the past is I have one and a half cups of white whole wheat flour and two cups of all purpose flour, unbleached all purpose flour. But like I said, use what's in your pantry, but just beware if you use regular, the brown whole wheat flour, it is not going to come out tasting the same. It's going to be a little bit tougher and your family may not like it. And if you're not used to it, it can be a little bit too much fiber for your diet. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and add that all in. Make sure I get all this in. And it's easy. I mean, you just dump all this into your, your mixer and it's going to do the work for you. And like I said, if you don't have a mixer, you can definitely do this by hand. It's going to take about 10 minutes for you to do it by hand. And it's a little bit of elbow work, but it can be done. And it's healthier. There's no preservatives. It tastes better. It's very cheap. Most of these things you already have on hand either in your refrigerator or in your pantry. I just want to make sure I get all this out of here. Don't want to waste any of these ingredients. Okay. And the last thing I'm going to add is a teaspoon of salt. And we happen to have sea salt in our pantry. But again, you can use table salt. You can use kosher salt. Whatever kind of salt you have. But number one thing you want to remember is with the salt, do not add it directly into the liquids. That's why I've added all the other ingredients and the flour sitting on top. And now I'm going to add in the salt because the salt will kill the yeast if you add it to the liquids directly. So I just put it right there on top. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn my mixer on low, like stir or one. And I'm going to mix it until it's combined. I'm going to leave it at that because if you beat it too high, it's going to become sticky and it's, um, you're going to need to keep adding flour. But if you do it at this very low speed for about 8 to 10 minutes and you'll see it start to come, become smooth and elastic and it'll spring back. And I'll show you guys what that looks like when I'm done. But you want to do it for about 8 to 10 minutes on a low speed. No medium, no high. Trust me when I say this. I've made this at least 15, 20 times in, since we've started using this recipe. And this is a recipe I've created myself. So, like I said, I'm going to mix it on low speed for about 8 to 10 minutes. And then I will come back and show you guys what's the next step. So stay tuned. Okay, guys, it has been about 8 minutes since I started mixing my dough. So I let it mix on a very low speed, like I said, for about 8 minutes. Some people, it can take up to 10 minutes, but if you're doing it by hand, it could take 8 to 10 minutes. But I took the easy way out and I did it in my stand mixer. So when I was telling you guys, you want your dough to um, kind of be elastic and stretchy. If you could see here, if I pull, it like snaps back. And that's what you want to do. And that's how you know it's ready. You don't want to overmix your dough, but it's kind of really hard to overmix it. It's probably easier to undermix it anywhere from eight to 10 minutes and you guys should be fine, especially if you're doing it on low. So from here, I'm gonna just pull the dough off my dough hook and I'm working with one hand cause I'm trying to hold the baby up, but we're gonna take it off and it looks like that, if you guys can see. And to save dishes and save time, I'm just gonna pull the dough out of this bowl that I mixed it in. Pick it up, just like that. I'm going to add about a tablespoon of oil, same oil I use in the dough, to the bottom of the bowl. Just kind of get it around. This is to keep the, the dough from sticking. So you want to get it all around in there because this is the point where you're going to go ahead and let it rise. And this is something that you want to kind of do earlier in the day or over the weekend because it does take time to rise. And I don't mind it myself because I'm at home all day and I do it usually when the kids are taking their nap. But you just turn it over and let it coat it. And what you want to do is from here, let me move this out of the way. You want to take this oil coated dough and you're going to cover it with a clean kitchen towel. Just like this. And you can put it on your counter. If it's sunny outside, put it in your windowsill. Um, you can even put it in the oven. If you heat your oven at a very low temperature to about 150 degrees, turn it off. Let it cool down for about five minutes and then you're going to stick your um, bowl in there. It can sit in there as well. And you want to let it rise for at least one hour 
because I do it early in the day, I let it sit for about two hours. I mean, the longer it sits, the better. I mean, it's not going to hurt anything. So I'm going to let it sit for about two hours, like I normally do with this towel over it, over on my counter or over on my windowsill. And I'll come back and show you guys what it looks like because it'll be doubled in size. And then we'll go ahead and form the dinner rolls from there. And this recipe will make about 20 good size rolls. And believe me, that may seem like a lot, but they will not last long. Make this batch. Make it. Okay, so when I'm done, I'll come back and I'll show you guys what it looks like after it has risen for about two hours. Okay guys, the dough has risen for about two hours. So now my children are awake, so you will hear them in the background. And Justice is awake, so you will hear her as well. But this is what the dough looks like after sitting on my counter for two hours. It has doubled in size. So, if you're a beginner, you can go ahead and take the dough out, put can it on I a scale, it? and weigh it. Yes. Can I pass to myself too? Hold on, Jada. Okay. So I'm going to have distractions. Please bear with me. But like I said, if you're a beginner, you can take the dough out and weigh it and then uh, divide it by 20, however much you get, and that will make 20 rolls. But because I've done it so many times, I can kind of eyeball it. The one thing I do want to say is that you get yourself a large cookie sheet like this. This is, I think, a 15-inch um, jelly roll pan is what they're called. Um, if you don't have a Silpat or a silicone baking mat like the one I have here, and they're pretty cheap to get. I got mine at Bed Bath & Beyond. But if you don't have one, you can oil your pan. You can put corn uh, meal down for a little bit of crunch if you want. But I like to use this because it's easy to clean up and nothing sticks to it and it's oven safe. So when you're making the rolls, you don't want to pull the dough, like rip it and pull it apart. You want to kind of squeeze it, you know, in between your fingers as if you're just pinching some of it off. And I'll show you really quickly here what I'm talking about. Let's see, can you guys see this? So I'm going to take the dough, make sure that, and since you oiled it, it's not going to really stick to this pan. But see how it puffed back down? You just want to take a small amount like this and squeeze it, pinch it off. See, I just pinched it with my finger. And I can get a little bit more, but you just pinch it off just like that. And what you want to do is you want to take it and shape it over your middle or index finger. Just shape it around. And you're trying to make a ball. I'll just leave mine in the palm of my hand. That's another way to do it. Just take it, that piece of dough you just pinched off, put it into the palm of your hand, and just pinch it together in the middle. And you're trying to make a ball. Can you guys see that? You see how it's coming together in the middle there? And you just pat that down, and you're going to place it seam side, bless you mama, seam side down. Just like that. Bless you. And I'll come back when I have all 20 of them done and I'll show you the next step you need to do. So stay tuned. Okay, now I have finished the 20 rolls and this is what it looks like on a silk pad on the cookie sheet. So now I'm going to cover it with a clean kitchen towel once again. And I'm going to put it on my counter or in my windowsill over by the window for at least 30 minutes. But I may even leave it for a full hour because it's only about 4.30 and we don't eat dinner until 6.30. So once you let it rise for 30 minutes to an hour, however long you would like, you're going to make an egg wash. And the egg wash is just going to be one egg beaten with either a tablespoon of milk, cream, water, whatever you have. Just whisk that up and you're going to brush it on. I'll show you guys what it looks like after it has risen. They're going to puff up really nicely and the egg wash is going to help it brown. So when that part comes, I'll show you guys. So stay tuned for the final part. Okay, guys, it has been about... 45 minutes, almost an hour. No, it's been an hour since I did the second rise on these rolls. And I, like I said, I just covered it with the clean kitchen towel and sat it off on my corner. And um, it rose up to this. Now you guys can definitely see that they have risen. So to prepare it for the oven, I'm going to preheat my oven to 375 degrees Fahrenheit. And I'm going to do this egg wash I was telling you guys about earlier. And in this egg wash is just one egg that I've beaten up and I've added one tablespoon of milk. And if you don't have milk, you can use cream, half and half, water, just some sort of liquid that you need to add to it. And it's going to give it a nice sheen and help them brown up very nicely. And when you do this, you can use, don't waste the egg, don't throw it out. You can use it in omelets, scrambled eggs, use it in a recipe that calls for an egg, or it can keep for three days as an egg wash in your refrigerator. But I'm not one for wasting. So I'm just going to take my brush and brush each and every one of these rolls. And once I get done brushing them, 
I'm going to put it in my oven, like I said, at 375 degrees Fahrenheit, and they're going to bake for about 15 to 20 minutes. You want to check them out after about 15 minutes, and they should be light brown by then. Um, you can leave them in for an extra minute or so if you want them to be a little bit darker. And then I'll come back and show you guys what they look like after they have baked in the oven. Okay? So, stay tuned for that. All right, guys. The rolls have baked in the oven for about 20 minutes. Maybe a little bit less, but probably around 17 minutes. But like I said, it took between 15 and 20 minutes. That's it. And you'll have fresh, hot, homemade rolls. And like I said, these even have whole wheat in there. And your family will never even know the difference. So this is just a spread of what we're having for dinner tonight. Obviously, we're having these dinner rolls, but we're having it with uh, roasted garlic butter spread that I made the other day. Some maple glazed roasted corn. Some coconut rice here as well as some organic barbecue roasted chicken. And I'll give you guys a quick close up of the rolls. That is what they look like and they are delicious. So I hope you guys give this recipe a try and if you have any questions, remember to leave me a comment below. And as always, God bless and take care. Bye guys.